What's up, y'all? It's Misha. I am back with another video. I am a full-time entrepreneur, blogger, massage therapist, and health educator. I talk a lot about my massage business and different variations of health that I'm going to get into. But today, we're talking about how to start a mobile massage or mobile spa business on wheels okay how to start a mobile massage business and that's via like a spa truck or any type of spa business or even if you're not doing spa this kind of applies to most um most service-based businesses like a barber or esthetician or anything of that nature this kind of applies to you too but i'm just speaking in experience from doing research from a point of a massage therapist um let's jump right into the topic okay so i was considering doing this at one point i was going all in i was looking up all the researchers i was talking to people who's already done it i was ready to go full throttle with going mobile but as time went on and i kept trying i'm like eh, i don't think this is for me first of all i don't I only like driving when I want to drive. I don't want to drive every day. I try to limit how much labor I do because I feel like massage is already a, a labor in a way kind of job. No matter how much I like doing it, in a way you're already using your body, you're using your hands, you're using your your skills to make someone feel better, to help with their healing and their pain. And I don't want to do more than that. So I try to limit that. So if I have to go mobile, whether I'm carrying tables into someone's home or whether I'm driving around the truck and trying to find a location to sit at, I decided I, this ain't for me. I don't want to do that. I just want to massage and focus on my, my skills, which is massaging. So the first thing I wrote down is your vehicle is important. What type of vehicle you're getting, like a step van, um, a box truck, an RV, even like a shuttle van or something like that. Which one are you gonna get? Um, in my research and my experience back then, I noticed that step vans, those box trucks are cheaper. They're a bit cheaper, so I was able to get one if I wanted to for like around six to 10K. And like a shuttle van or something was a little bit more expensive. So are you gonna buy one straight out or are you gonna lease it? You still gotta gut it out regardless, but what are you going to do? Do you want to pay those interest loans? And if you want to go the cheaper route, you might have to get an older model. Like more than likely, if you're going to pay under 10K, you're going to get an older model van. Um, and I'm saying old, old. But those older models, just because it's an older model doesn't mean it doesn't work well. That only goes for like the regular like cars and stuff. But those um, box trucks, those vans type of cars, those they last a long time. So... Um, I would just get one that's in great condition that doesn't have like a major accidents or anything like that um, That looks appealing the appearance of it nothing that's all beat up like somebody that took good care of their of their van or their truck also um, The gutting process now you can do it for the gutting process, you can do a DIY type of thing. If you're a DIY type of person, you like doing stuff on your own, you ain't about to hire a bunch of people to do it. Me, I would have to hire somebody to gut out my vehicle. But you, on the other hand, can take all your, your car seats out. You can take all of it out and do the whole decorating and all that yourself. So that has to be accounted for when it comes to your budget of doing a mobile type of business. Uh, when it comes to converting your van the gutting process and the interior decorating, you also got to think about the sink, like water. You need things like that. You have to have that. Uh, most states, you have to have a sink. if you're doing, Especially if you're doing something like permanent makeup and stuff like that. They want you to have a, a sink. And that is not a DIY type of thing. You have to source out to get that. Um, electrical upgrades. You might have to get a welder for sockets, stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's a process. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to get a van and then I'm about to put a table in it and I'm about to start working. Like, you got to get a lot of things in order to do that. Um, oh, also, the generator. Are you going to you need a generator or are you going to go the the battery-powered route? And when you think about the sink, the water temperature makes a difference. Um, the maintenance of the truck, you got to keep it up. You got to make sure you keep up that. And I wasn't willing to do that once again. <laughs> um, but that part can easily run you about 4K, 4K, 10K. Easily. Um, 
So it's it's a it's an investment up front. But once you get into it, I think it's um, not hard to get clients. People are always going to be interested in seeing some type of van or truck. Um, that's some type of mobile business. It kind of attracts clients to you. So once you actually get it done, I do think the potential of clientele is there. But the initial process is, you know, it could be a lot for some. And it just wasn't for me. Also, you need to consider your state laws and stuff like that. Like I know something as simple as a restroom. You have to have a restroom close to your location. Wherever you're gonna park this vehicle, you gotta have a restroom that's not too far away. In most states state that you have to have a restroom on deck. Like, so if you're gonna do it, maybe you buy a grocery store, you make sure that, you know, it's adjacent and not too far for wherever you're gonna park. So little stuff like that makes a difference that they can, you know, you don't want to get shut down. So little things like that make a difference. You want to register your business. So you might need like permits, um, a license, pay attention to your signage when you're driving. Um, if you have a, depending on the height and the weight of your vehicle, you want to, you want to know these things like, oh, it might say no trucks allowed on this street over the weight of this or you know you don't want to go down that street you don't want to be tipping over or you don't want or the weight might be a bit too much so you need to know the height and weight of your vehicle little things like that make a difference um and if you want to know like what all you need go to your local city hall they gonna have the answers for you for sure because every state is different so i can't talk about too much on that but this every state is different next we talking about insurance. So when you're driving a car, you need insurance. So the same thing goes with your business truck, your mobile business, you need insurance. Only thing different here is you need auto insurance. And you also need general liability insurance. So you need both. You need two different types of insurance. And most people take out the million dollar insurance policy. Um, you can do what's best for you. So I don't judge you do what's best for you but most people take that out when it comes to something like a vehicle and this vehicle is used for their business somebody can hit you somebody somebody can slip and fall in it anything you just want to have insurance you want to have both of them you just want to be on point because i've noticed that certain states are a little bit more strict when it comes to mobile businesses they want them to have this and have that because it's becoming a more popular thing that people want to do so just you know have all your ducks in a row don't let them people play with you another thing is how will your sub payment will you have a car reader with everything booking site most people take walk you know walk-in clients in their mobile you know because a lot of people just see it and like oh what's this about okay can i come in and get a haircut can i get a massage can i get a facial people will just walk up to you and want to know like yeah what's this about this is cute some people just want to inquire and they nosy but a lot of times you you build clientele like that even if they're just inquiring they might want to book for a couple of weeks from now so how are you going to set them are you going to use square are you going to use the, um what are those sites like mind and body which which booking site are you going to use what are you going to do and how are you going to do it in person because a lot of people walk in and a lot of people like doing cash too so that's something to think about. Keep a repair and towing company on deck. You never know what's gonna happen with your vehicle. So you wanna have all those things in a notebook, something handy just to say, just in case anything goes wrong, you wanna be on point as a business person, as a business professional that shoot, I don't got time. Something happened to my vehicle. This is my money maker. Let me make sure I got the tow man on, on call, like right there, hello? Yeah, um, I'm gonna need you to fix my truck. Okay. Make sure you're licensed for all the services you're providing. You do not wanna be doing stuff just because you heard or you don't wanna be like the main one people do. Um, sculpting bodies and stuff or permanent makeup artists, but you don't got your body art practitioner license, stuff like that. You just wanna be on point when you outside and you mobile because a lot of people wanna come to you. You're not supposed to park here. Why? Are you know, like when you new on the block, people be hating sometimes. You just want to, like, I already got my paperwork. I got everything on point. You don't want to be one of those people that's falling short because people be hating on when you first get started. But once after you hit that hurdle, like once you get up, get through that, I think this is a great business model for people that are into mobile businesses. Another thing is, or well, another tip is 
I would charge a bit more for my services that I'm now that I'm mobile. Because sometimes people want you to come to their house. And I know when you're first starting out, you're going to try different things. You might try, I'm only at this location. I'm going to drive the people. They want me. They call me. They booked me. I'm going to go to their home. Um, charge a bit more. Do not lowball yourself. I don't care what nobody say. Do not lowball yourself. You're driving to people. You're, you're convinced. You're convenient for people. So you have gas, gas has hell right now. You don't want to be charging low, you know, like no, no $80 stuff. I don't care. No $80 stuff. Okay. Only, and this is for massage therapists and estheticians and stuff. Okay. I know barbers, you can't maybe not necessarily, I don't know about bar being a barber or nothing like that, but I don't know how much y'all can charge. I don't know if y'all charge $80 for clients, but look, don't mess up the game. Do not charge less than $80 for a mobile massage okay when you're driving and you're going to people homes because the cost of living is so high right now that if you lowball and charging 50 60 dollars and you're driving to people like your time your gas your vehicle your equipment your inventory and you're coming to them and my labor and my you know, eighty dollars okay you need to have some type of travel fee and make it um sometimes i build it i put it in there so it's not like oh you know, I got to add, I have an add on price. If you want to do this, it's more like, no, I just put it in my price. Another thing is why I didn't want to do it was because I noticed that when you don't have the same location, some clients tend to don't like, they don't like to be all over the place. They want to know where they're going and where they're going to. So unless you came to their home, but if you, if they seen you at, you was at the parking lot of a big mall or something, you was parked there and that's where they seen you at they those clients will want to see you there again so they don't want to know oh oh now you was just in inglewood but now you in chatsworth or now you uh downtown like i want to see you again in Inglewood. when are you gonna be back over there because that's when i want to see you because you was over there when i seen you so you know you know clients are entitled sometimes and they like they like what they like they they want to keep things the same so that's one of the reasons why I just like to keep one location, the same thing. So that's why I would suggest or keep one location or one neighborhood, like one area, like stay in the same area besides the clients that you go to. But try to keep a similar schedule so people know when they want to find you, they know where to find you at. Or I'm sure some people can call, but that's how you keep your 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 clients, you know, all on one on one page. They know where to find you. You know, they just want to book and they want to come. They don't want to be like, so where you at now? Oh, you over there? Um, trust me on that part. So if you're a DIY kind of person and you like to do things on your own, you can do most of this, most of these things when it comes to gutting out your your vehicle and finding your vehicle and buying it straight out. You know, this business can run you anywhere from about 7 to 15 k to start. You know, if you plan on doing a lot of things yourself, finding things, cheaper parts, and, you know, just taking your time with this business as a mobile spa truck or whatever. It could take you about, you know, a good 7 to 15 bands. And, but if you know that you're going to need some help and I ain't got that many family and friends that's going to be like on board and... I need to spend a little money. It can run you anywhere from 20 to 50K. So I just want you to be realistic and know what you're getting yourself into. And that's it. I hope this video was able to help you make a decision on whether you want to start a mobile spa truck on wheels. Okay, your mobile spa on wheels. If this is for you, um, this is a great business model. Don't get me wrong. Don't let my opinion, uh, my personal preference affect you really evaluate and see if this is for you or not but it just wasn't for me at the time i don't ever know what i would like to do in 10 years but at the time it wasn't for me it wasn't cost effective and but it definitely can be cost effective now so next time you get a loan or something and you really like the whole idea of having a mobile boutique or mobile massage business or a mobile um a mobile spa truck this is great for you just consider all those things i said just know it might cost a bit for you but in the long run you can get great clients from it and there's a lot of potential there in the mobile business like comment subscribe i will be back with another video soon peace